as a way of an introduction, I am a scientist. Admittedly, I don't think I've always known that I was a scientist. I'm also passionate, extremely passionate. So the next few minutes, what I want to do is tell you a story of how science and passion can actually come together to make some amazing discoveries. So my story begins at OSU. Now, those of you who are Texas fans, chill, OK? This is a different OSU. This happens to be Oregon State University, right? OK? They're actually known for their incredibly fierce mascot, the beaver, all right? So anyway, so I decided while I was at OSU that I wanted to embark upon a career in nutrition. So I found myself enrolled then in the College of Home Economics where I was able to take amazingly strenuous scientific courses, such as meal management, food demonstration, family food buying, also known as grocery shopping, <laughs> as well as home food preservation, also known as canning, all right? So, but what I learned there was probably the most important nutrition piece of information I learned is actually in my math class, and it goes something like this. And that is that each one of you probably eats over an entire year about 912,000 calories. Now, if you wanted to gain just one pound of body fat, albeit not of us, none of us really want to gain any, right? But just suffice it to say, if you wanted to gain one pound of body fat, that's about 3,500 calories. So let's do the math on this. That turns out to be about 11 calories per day. So if you overeat one potato chip a day, you will gain one pound of body fat. Now, I'm going to hope that we don't have potato chips for break, but just remember that each extra potato chip you eat will amount to an extra pound of body weight. So while I was in studying nutrition, the Centers for Disease Control decided that they would actually start looking at the relative rates of obesity throughout the United States. Now, some of you may have seen these maps before, but I find them to be completely fascinating. So this is a map of the United States. And what they're doing is the color, the intensity of the state's color depicts how many people in that state are actually considered to be obese. So this is in 1995, and this is in 1996. So we have a relatively low level of obesity throughout the United States. So at this point, I graduated from college, and I decided to embark in a career actually in the US Army. And so the first thing I was in, had to encounter was the Army Medical Department, and then I had to do the rigors of basic training or believe it or not, I became an expert with an M16. And that is not a picture of me, <laughs> okay? So, just so you know, all right? So, so while I was in the military, though, I also learned quickly that the rigors of the physical training program are intense. We had to do a bazillion push-ups, we had to do a bazillion sit-ups, and we had to run. And oh, did we have to run. But I will admit to you that every single time I put on those tennis shoes, I had an incredible fear that I wasn't going to be able to do it, that I couldn't run a step, that I actually couldn't do this at all. And so I kept running and trying and trying, but every single day I had a new fear that I wasn't going to be able to do this. So because of my nutrition background, the military decided, aha, let's make her in charge of the MREs. These are the meals ready to eat. These are the nutritional rations that the soldiers actually take upon deployment. So I was in charge then of coming up with the nutritional requirements to meet the calorie demands of the soldier when they're deployed. So while I was busy doing this, it was quite evident to me, though, the United States was not necessarily meeting their nutritional needs. So if we now look at these maps of the United States and look at the obesity prevalence, we're starting to see that it's starting to go up a little bit more and more. And it's as if the United States had amassed their own weapons of mass destruction. <laughs> the knife, fork, and spoon. And so I'm like, OK, what's going on here? People are getting larger and larger and larger, and yet we have absolutely no idea. Now, this actually became important with the military. We didn't have uniforms that fit the girth, OK? So we had ended up with an incredible nutritional problem, an obesity problem, actually, within the military. And so we, the military was taking a huge hit. We're recruiting soldiers who were more and more obese, so what do we need to do? So again, because of my nutrition program, they said, OK, you're going to now be in charge of the Army Weight Reduction Program. So the way we do it in the Army is we actually take a tape measure, and we measure your girth, and then we determine mathematically how obese you actually are. And what became quite evident to me was that men and women deposit their fat very differently. So this is one of my first scientific discoveries. And I asked the question, why? Why do men and women deposit fat in different depots? What's up with that? 
So I asked an even more stupid question at the time, but believe it or not, no one had ever done this. I asked, is a male fat cell the same thing as a female fat cell? So now I'm turning all of you into scientists. You're looking through a microscope, and you're looking at actual fat cells. Now the question was, is a male fat cell the same thing as a female fat cell? And what we found was absolutely not. So as a way of sort of helping you understand this, I'm going to show you that a male fat cell is very analogous to wool. Okay, so again, we're looking down a microscope, we're looking at these fat cells, and what you see is this fibrous connective tissue around the fat cells. Male fat cells can't expand. They can't take up those extra potato chips. They just sit there and they can't go any further. Female fat cells, as all of you in the, who in, the, in the audience who are women, you know your fat cells, they expand. They take up more and more of those potato chips and you have an incredible ability to store all those extra calories, right? So why is this important? Well, let's look at it even metabolically. So if you happen to be a male and you have that wool fat cell, you can't expand it, you can't take up those extra potato chips. And this is very much analogous to when you store your fat in your belly, this visceral fat, it can't go any further. And it can't expand more. So those extra potato chips end up in your heart and in your liver and in your pancreas, all places you don't want that fat to go. And therefore, you end up with diseases such as cardiovascular disease and metabolic diseases. Women, on the other hand, have this incredible ability to expand their fat cells and make them bigger and bigger. And therefore, we're able to move all this fat around. So why is this? Well, I went and saw the, my questions from the, our ancestors who actually told us why this might be. Women had to have this incredible ability to expand your fat cells because we have to during pregnancy and lactation. We need to store more and more calories, which will enable us to be able to utilize those calories during pregnancy and lactation. Men, on the other hand, are not able to do this because they put fat directly into their visceral depot, which is the most metabolically readily usable fat depot. And so we can store fat there and utilize it in a very quick fashion. And in this way, it allows them to be the predator instead of the predatee. So now I'm going to give you a quiz. Of these two individuals, which one of them is actually healthier? We have a male and a female who is actually matched for overall body weight. Which one is actually healthier? So hopefully all of you chose that the woman actually is because, again, she has these incredible fat cells. So what's your takeaway message? It's very scientific. Men and women are not the same. Okay? <laughs> very scientific. All right. And matter of fact, those of you who are women love those sexy hips and thighs. They're very important to you. Okay, so as I was doing this, we were watching the United States get fatter and more obese and more obese and more obese. It's quite incredible, isn't it? We're even adding new colors to depict the level of obesity in the United States. So at this point, I was getting really frustrated, and I didn't know what to do. <laughs> so I decided I would take to the road, and I would be like Forrest Gump, and I ran. And I ran, and I ran, and I ran, and I was just not getting anywhere. I kept hitting the wall, and hitting the wall, and hitting the wall. And people were getting larger, and larger, and larger, and larger. And clearly, I wasn't being very effective, because you can see that obviously they're getting larger, and larger, and larger still. So at this point, let's just step back and take sort of an analysis of what's happening. So this is the, what's happening with respect to the obesity epidemic. This is where Debbie enters the nutrition profession. If anything, you could say she actually is facilitating the obesity epidemic, right? <laughs> OK. So what was what, I had to have some sort of recipe. And I, I went back to my passion. And I was able to finish my first marathon. And I was like, OK, this is what I'm going to do. So now I had to decide, what am I going to do in my career? I'm having some problems. So I had a fork in the road, went to Yogi Berra, and said, when you have a fork in the road, take it. And there was my fork, and there was my road, and off I went. So I went and decided to get a doctoral degree. I went to the University of Georgia, known for their incredibly fierce mascot, the Bulldog. So I went to the lab. I was wearing a little dress and high heels, and my mentor handed me a rat. And I said, what am I going to do with this? <laughs> I have this furry animal in my hands. And so I, he said, do what you do best, make it fat. So I gave it <laughs> potato chips. <laughs> and, and, and I said, OK, I've made it fat. What do I do now? And he said, OK, put it on a diet. So I was able to put it on a diet success. I'm a, a rat doctor. I can make my rat lose weight. And I'm like, OK, great. So now what happens? As soon as I took my rat off of the diet, it gained the way back. Now, how many of you have done that scientific experiment yourself? As soon as you come off your diet, you gain all your weight back. So that was pretty profound. So I came up with the idea, is it possible then our very fat cells are actually sending some sort of signal to our brain 
that tells us how much we're supposed to actually eat. Well, if that were true, we wouldn't have an obesity epidemic. So maybe there's something in our diet, in those potato chips, like fat, which actually blocks our brain's ability to understand how many calories we need. So that could be possibly true. And maybe the fats in our diet are not helping us register whether we're hungry or full. So instead of just eating one potato chip, you actually eat a whole bag of potato chips. And so while I was doing this the research, uh, it was becoming really popular. And someone said, OK, maybe it hits your brain. And so this is the experiment that many of you have done, where that you've taken a bite of agen ice cream, it's been all tasty, and you end up eating the entire container and maybe going for more, right? So, so that's really important. So, so what can we learn? Why might this be? Well, our ancestors didn't have refrigeration, so they had to eat absolutely everything. They had to eat the entire carcass when it came into the village. And if they didn't, then they might have a starve for later. So, but we actually have a refrigerator, and so we don't ever have that problem. So while I was doing this research, HBO actually became really interested in my research. Um, they actually have this amazing documentary called Way to the Nation, and for which they had highlighted some of my research. Also, um, then the producers at The View also became really interested, and I was able to talk them with the now infamous Paula Dean about obesity, right? So, so what's your takeaway message? What, what should you learn from all of this? Well, that is that our ancestors have told us a lot about nutrition, body weight, and everything else. But even more importantly, if you're trying to monitor your body weight, you need to really be careful. You need not to pay attention to what your brain is telling you with respect to whether you're hungry or full. You need to actually step away from the carcass. Thank you.